And now for our weekly news segment. Okay, so we have 42 people watching on StreamYard. Put the video in the chat. Like, like. like and share. Like and share the video. Like I hope that Zach guy jumps up. Can, yeah. Is this this is a new headset? Do I sound all right? Yeah, you sound good, man. Okay. Yeah, man. You're still in Puerto Rico, huh? Chilling? No, actually, <laughs> I am now in Washington. Oh. Um, but if Zach is still watching the show, you really should come up here. I have so many questions. But yeah, they, they were attacking you on Twitter as well. Last <laughs> I saw. Did you see that? I don't think they understand how thick the skin actually is. Like <laughs> it should be a la- it should be fun. Alaskan pachyderm instead of Alaskan on, so they don't have to worry about offending me. I don't know why they brought you into the convo. That was pretty funny. They just started like Well the thing is is like I could give two shits about like a bunch of like bickering back and forth on some Fed coin like Bitcoin, right? But I was just curious, like there was all of these accusations being thrown around and I was just like, hey, can somebody actually show me like how you know these things so I can know them? Right. Like I just started calling people out. I was like, hey, how do you actually know that this guy's surveilling you or how do you actually know that this? And I just started like actually asking them, what's the deal? Right. So none of them brought the receipts i waited right i i legit i waited to see if they were gonna bring the receipts nobody could show me that these people were like adding spyware to their code nobody could show me that they were actually like taking money from the cia or what it was just a whole bunch of different people that you know all of the the paranoia crowd were saying were just like these horrible people and I just asked for proof, and nobody had it. I didn't even see that take place on Twitter. So th- that you're you're referring to Wasabi, right? And they're, you're asking them to show show you the proof. That well, that that was one example. It's basically so I was on vacation, as you know, still am, <laughs> and I decided like I was going to go all in on trying to, you know, all of those Twitter beefs and everything that people always talk about. Like I wanted to know what proof any of these people had and i am noticing more and more that the people who talked the loudest had nothing to show for it right they had they had no evidence whatsoever of like or or, i mean maybe they do but they're not showing me that's the problem right because i'm just supposed to take their word for it that okay this guy who is willing to come up on a show and you know make his case like the, the like he didn't give me any reason to doubt what he was saying but these people who said oh my god doug is basically satan's baby with the antichrist after he you know seeded from moloch or whatever because he let a guy talk on a show okay it's like okay yeah <laughs> so this guy allowed somebody to talk on a show but then he asked somebody else to talk on a show who won't show up and the reasoning behind it is because what exactly like i and that's what i'm that's what i'm struggling with and i i mean zach everything that he said in chat was very interesting to me right yeah but it's like okay where are the samurai crowd getting this idea that wasabi has all of this naughty stuff going on now i don't use either one of them because i'm actually over here in freedom land using monero and like trading value for actual digital cash right, so all of you bit yeah all of you bitcoin guys can enjoy your soap opera and i'll stand here and laugh for a little while but like it's you know i i hope you, i wish you all well but could you please bring me some receipts so i can actually see whether or not anything you're telling me is true that would be amazing and honestly i don't know enough about it either and i i feel bad i wish i knew more going into that interview i knew there was drama and he's been accused of stuff I, I am guilty of not doing my homework well enough to like really, uh, you know, attack him, which I hope like anybody who's seen my show, I don't hold back. I mean, if there was something that I knew that I should ask him, I would have been more than happy to to put it in his face. Well, um, Doug, like I'm not going to be your white knight, right? Because I mean, fuck you just like everybody else. Right. But I'm just saying like. Is it actually your job to be all in the know about all of the reasons why people hate somebody? 
Yeah, right? that, like, it's, or is it like here? Here's the platform, and I'm gonna let anybody come on the stage and harass you about anything. You right. better be ready. Right. You know, like I don't know what people are gonna say when they get on viewers on stage, but this is a chance to defend yourself, or this is a chance to look like a bitch. You know, what's yeah, it gonna be? Or you know, <laughs> to have anybody from the samurai clan jump up here and tell us all that other side and explain everything. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you this, like for those listening in the Samurai Wallet and Ronin Dojo and all of those guys, right? I had a lot more respect for you guys before all of what I've seen in the last week and a half. Like a lot more respect than I do now. Because it speaks volumes to me that you have hours to spend spamming Twitter all day about how a guy is guilty of whatever but not minutes to spend to bring us the evidence and furthermore this guy that you're making these accusations of came onto a public platform and actually added value to the conversation okay now you could say the same about like the ronin dojo guy was on uh watchman privacy and you know he added a lot of value to that conversation and he did a good job and whatever but like where are these samurai purity test vigilantes when it comes to adding value to these conversations that's what i want to know why do they spend so much time claiming that a guy is guilty of something and not proving it and that, i mean i know that's not what this show is about but i think it's important for any of you guys listening if you want to make the accusation, I need proof if I'm going to believe you. And a lot of people feel the same way. So if you want to maintain the level of respect that you have gained from all of the hard work that you guys have done with your development, with, uh, you know, with uh, it, it, great, you have Bitcoin, Monero, Atomic Swaps. That's amazing. And I'm super glad that you guys did the work. But if you want respect, you're also going to need to hold your tongue unless you have the evidence to back up your claims. Otherwise, I'm just going to see you as another, um, what was the name of the guy who is uh, like kind of the, he did GNU, uh, not Linus Torvald, but. Richard Stallman? Uh, yeah, Richard Stallman, like where, you know, he does this amazing stuff for freedom and privacy and then he goes and shields his communism and. Yeah, and it's just it like it's just like, dude, <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> but I'll I'll leave it at that. Yeah, when I had Stallman, he's worried that Monero might be used for uh, tax evasion, right? Um, yeah, crazy. I hope it is. Fuck giving the Wait, government really? tax. That's one of his concerns. Yeah, remember I interviewed. Yeah, him. he's oh, he's like super Stallman? pro tax. Yeah, he's super pro tax for one, this and then for two. I was part of this. Yeah, like he's he's really like hardcore government. Remember, a lot of this stuff came from like some pretty lefty shit. And if you think about it, open source software is like really like has a lot of lefty core ideologies, right? Like yeah. it's, you know, anti intellectual property and all that stuff is really more of a left versus right value in the old way of thinking it was, so it was a, lot of, a yeah. very difficult interview to do for anybody who watched it. It's like He's a he's a very difficult guy to talk to. By the way, that's how I heard of Monero Talk. So that one probably got you a lot of people. It did. Saying. It did. Um, but yeah, let, let, let's let's go on with the news and yeah, what, what really with the whole samurai thing. Like, yeah, guys, anybody in the samurai community, you're well. This stage is your stage as well. Obviously, I'd love to have Samurai on a Monero talk too. It's been years since I, I interviewed them, so just keep the channels open, guys. You could, you could attack me all you want, whatever, that's fine. But at the same, it's, you know, just interact with us. Let's let's get the information out there. Let's talk out in the open. Uh, like when Seth, like two weeks ago, was, was talking about XMR to BTC atomic swaps and criticizing the fact that, that they're using an implementation where it may be, may be obvious that a swap is happening. Uh, I thought that was like very valid and something worth having a conversation about. And they, you know, they tried to cancel him on that as well. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that, that was kind of the biggest turnoff. It, it even really had nothing to do with me. For me yeah. I think the talk happened 
with the uh, samurai devs not implementing like taproot addresses right. like yeah they don't like the lightning but uh, uh, taproot still gives like little bit amount of privacy if you want to use like multi sig addresses or like scripting addresses yeah they, they, they didn't want to hear it they didn't want to have that they didn't want to talk about it um all right but let's 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 move on with the news otherwise we will never mm -hmm. get through this show Tony, you, you want to take it away, and we'll we'll try to move things along. If people have a comment that they're dying to to bring yep. up, you, you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's go ahead. So uh, I'll go one by one. If you guys want to add anything, you know, just go ahead. So uh, Finland's National Bureau of Investigation claims to have traced Monero. Um, so the KRP, Finnish National Bureau of Investigation, said that it successfully traced Monero tra Monero transaction. The cyber criminal, the KRP, were after got ransoms so this is the situation so essentially he got, he got ransoms in bitcoin he wanted to get paid if somebody bitcoin, isn't muted you're something. adding feedback please mute yeah everybody mute yeah some there we go okay so essentially somebody somebody wanted to get paid in bitcoin for a ransom for some reason then obviously then he knew about monero um so took the bitcoin into a non-kyc exchange in that exchange um he swapped the the Bitcoin to Monero. So the KRP made an information request to the exchange. What has this person done? And then um, that person sent those Monero to his own private wallet. And after that, he sent Moneros to Binance and again exchange them to, to um, Bitcoin. Oh. So, okay, to go over it again, he got paid in Bitcoin, took it to a non KYC exchange, and he was like, okay. Let me get bit let me get monero now took the monero into a private wallet and the person said okay let me take this monero from the private wallet into binance different exchange and then get bitcoin again and then pretty much um finland's national bureau of investigation claims that they have traced monero but really they just added one plus one and said okay this amount from this exchange correlates to this amount from binance and that's how they they trace monero but they claimed that it was actually uh, you know, trace. Yeah, we we don't really know what, right? We don't really know. I don't know if people have who's really has a deep knowledge of this, but it seems like it's either what you're saying, Tony, or perhaps an Eve Alice Eve attack, right? Yep, yep. Um, where they Wait, who produced that article? I can't see because I'm on a phone, unfortunately. Oh, this is from um, it's a Finland um, that, news. That person screwed up bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know, we, know, but we know this up. weakness exists, but it's it's pretty it's pretty hard to mess that to mess that up, right? Uh, I I struggle to believe that all of this is even authentic. Mm, I'm just yeah, saying. like it's this 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 is a tough pill to swallow that this story is even actually real. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just saying. <laughs> I think so too, because if you know about Monero, why do you want to get paid in Bitcoin just to go for a non KYC exchange to get Monero and then do okay. all these why? Okay, to be fair, I've been on Dread and I've seen quite a few instances where people are like, I want to cash out and I have this Bitcoin. And it's like, no, dude, no, just no. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so could be an Eve Alice Eve attack. Somebody said in the comments, yeah, we don't know, but um, it's interesting. I, mean, I, I just point out that in Eve Alice Eve and the description that you just gave are fundamentally really not that different. Because, I mean, you can basically look at any exchange that's KYC as a, a government agent, right? So it's, as, yeah. soon as, as soon as you have as soon as you have an exchange on both sides of a known wallet, I mean, you've you've already evalued the guy, you know, so hey, they needed a story for their uh, narrative. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this true. is how they drive the price down like they were trying over that time, you know. Exactly. Yeah, but it's uh, and one more thing from the article. It's funny how they said at the same time, the KRP, again, the Finnish National Bureau of Investigation, they said that it has traced a cryptocurrency that was considered untraceable. <laughs> so... And and just being, you know, honest, right? We we This is an indication of the need, uh, uh, the need to move over to full knowledge uh proofs right full membership yeah. proofs yeah 100 percent. like this exchange from the weakness from exchange to exchange largely goes away uh well, largely is ameliorated 
with full membership proofs. So there's like, there's two things, there's two heuristics they can look at. Um, so the, the key thing is that he, he made the, the transfer from Bitcoin to Monero on an exchange. So they know exactly what the amount is. And then when they sent that Monero to his wallet, they know what the real output of that spend was from their exchange to his Monero wallet. After some time, um, probably someone that, that would do this probably gave it a few hours or at best a few days and then sent that straight to some other exchange um, that's also reporting to chain analysis and or is reporting to the government when uh, when they get a warrant. So they can correlate the amounts, yes, but they also have the probabilistic, um, the output, right? Like the exchange mm -hmm. that shared that output with chain analysis, right, that sent him the Monero. And also the exchange that received that output says, okay, here's one of the 15 um, outputs, right? They can just directly tie those together, especially if you didn't do any churning um, and if you didn't do any other means of obfuscating your Monero, it's very possible that he sent that same output that he received in the same ring that he sent to the secondary exchange, right? So that's like, okay, <clears throat> the amount is the same or very close to the same. And right, your ring, one of 16 there. Um, includes that same output that left the exchange. Like that's a very high probability assumption to make. Um, probably high enough that you know in court that that like it would stand up. So right. and, and is, go ahead. That, that that first exchange right it could could have also then sent additional transactions to that wallet right to to kind of gain more insight. Yeah, if they if they were really like if it was a high target or high value target, they very well could have sent him some pico Neros right. um, to try and uh, you know in case because if, you, if you're going to sweep like if let's suppose they sent one output, let's suppose he just withdrew the entire balance from from the exchange, um, so he's only got one output. Well, if the exchange then sends or if they share, um, right? If they if they share that address with the Fed boys or whatever, or in this case the. The other guys, they could, yeah, they could send some Pico Neros to your wallet that you might not notice. You might have three outputs sitting in that wallet. And if you're an unsophisticated actor, you're going to aggregate all those three outputs at the same time and send them to the next exchange when right. you dump the entire contents of your wallet to the next exchange. So it's like, there are mitigations for this, but if you're yeah, acting, well, like we say it all the time, if you're acting at this high level of a threat model, you absolutely, you're stupid. If you're that technically competent, right, to hack into people's computers, but you're not competent enough to spend a few days learning about how Monero works. Like, and, and the mitigation uh, procedure is like is is very straightforward, right? It's just w waiting, right? And then also just like sending sending uh, you know another transaction to yourself before sending it off to. I mean, there there is a million ways that this, and then once again, like this is why it's so hard for me to believe that this story that we even if if it's true that we have the full picture, because it's like I would be very interested to know how he got the ransom situation and what the ransom was for, why mm -hmm. it was paid, like how the feds were aware of the fact that such a ransom was paid. And then I would be very, very interested to know how with all of those situations in play in their optimal, they just happen to have the world's dumbest hacker, you know, like it's, <laughs> there's so many reasons why it's just really hard for me to believe but on the flip side, what's easy to believe is that the powers that be that have this incredible vested interest in pushing the price down at that particular moment in time, you know, people who are generating as much FUD for that particular currency as they can at that particular time, wouldn't be interested in creating such a story as this, right? And what does the headline say? Does it say, world's dumbest hacker gets caught no it says oh monero's defeated it's worthless now don't even bother buying it because you're you know that you see what i'm saying like there's so many layers to this that make me think i don't buy it <laughs> yeah yeah it's possible um that, that it, 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 some kind of higher level uh, uh, fake hack fake um you know compromise was done in terms of mitigation mitigations, it's it's definitely more than just turning. Like at this kind of level, you you have to do more than just turning. Like you need to examine if you were this person, you would need to examine the outputs that you actually have. You probably want to consolidate them into a transaction that goes to you, not to an exchange. Um, because after that consolidation moment, right, you're just one output that then gets lost in the noise. You probably then want to break that output into multiple different little outputs. Um and then deposit those at random different exchanges, right? For different amounts. Um, like, I mean, hypothetically that those are some things I would think about doing if I could find, um, hell, I mean, I maybe use BISC, right? Like 
just take the hint on the hit on that percentage and use BISC to make some more swaps. Um, if you can no, find a it, way to Saudi, I'm, I'm pretty. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're a lot more technical than I. But if if you just send a few transactions to yourself, I mean, how is that? Especially if you're wait if you're waiting decent amount of time over the course of, of days, uh, aren't all the inputs going to be pr pretty well well mixed at that point? I mean, I don't. I don't because know. Because if you got if you got a poison output attack against you and you have all these extra outputs, and um, you're doing like if you're just using the regular wallet and doing a send to self, you're not going to be quite sure if those um, if those poison outputs those pico narrows. Are getting picked up for the transaction or not you're not you're not going to be sure exactly what that looks like like okay you might and so at the end of that chain when you send it to the exchange you're still going to have this probabilistic association and each time that you you're adding another one of those outputs together um some of those poison outputs in a single transaction that you aggregate all of them and send to the exchange you're adding significant levels of probabilistic or, or probability that that was you or right that, that that that's the same person like at this level of threat modeling, you don't want to be fucking around. Like, like okay, if you bought some drugs on the dark web, whatever. Like, <laughs> they're not going to find you just because you pay deposited later to an exchange. But like, if you are a, a ransomware hacker, like you have a much higher threat model, and those things might not be good enough. And at a minimum, they could raise the reasonable suspicion against you to take action, right? And you want to avoid even the reasonable suspicion. You want to get lost completely. So you, you've got to take all these extra measures, and it's unfortunate. Um, but that's just like, that's a major weakness of, um, of, uh, ring signatures. All right. Like we said, we need full membership proofs. And I, I think the, the other point to make yeah, here too. We is need full membership proofs and we have to improve the network level privacy also. Yeah, after we have full membership proof and network level privacy, then uh, we, after even getting delisted from the exchanges, the tax and P2P markets, will, the network will be strong because most of the people will use like uh, light wallets. So yeah, it will give like more incentive to improve the privacy of Monero. Full, full membership proofs and being delisted from exchanges is all is you know pushing us into the direction of being more unstoppable and untraceable than than ever for sure. Yep. All right, keep moving with the news. Coinax has required mandatory ID verification for deposits and withdrawals of privacy coins, um, and the privacy coins are Beam. XHV, Oxandero, R, XMR, Zev, and Zeno. So if you're on CoinX, if you want to uh, deposit or withdraw privacy coins, you need mandatory ID verification. Z Zcash didn't make the list there? No, Zcash, yeah, but Zcash didn't I, make the list. See, if I were that person, the CoinX exchange, I would require uh, no ID to deposit privacy coins and then I would require ID to withdraw privacy coins so that I could just keep all their privacy coins. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it, Shotgun KYC. And kind of as a way to incentivize to catch the people to that use privacy coins because you deposit, okay, they didn't ask me anything, but now all of a sudden they're asking me to uh, verify my ID if I want to withdraw it. They can use that, that strategy too to catch people, but yeah. Yeah, just don't use. Don't use centralized exchanges or exchanges in general. Um, yeah, just stay away. Uh, let's actually play. Let's play this one now. It looks like we already have, have one mysuperchat.com from Fiat Demise saying, "Can my super chat be updated to accept crypto instead of just saying and the Fed we should use money? The state can't control or surveil like Monero. That's Fiat Demise. If there's a way of of implementing like crypto as a way to do like super chats, I think that would yeah. be cool. If anyone knows a solution, uh, hit us up. Um, look All right. Yeah, we were talking about this last week. Um, Luke Smith has been doing it for for years. Somebody just sent him that repository. I don't know if it works. I haven't tried it out myself yet, but it does require OBS. Yeah, Tux. If not using OBS. Yeah, I sent it to you uh, this week too. Yeah, we're trying to figure that out. Maybe by next week we could have something up and running. Maybe we could figure yeah. something out. Um, but yeah, it would be awesome to have uh, what's his name now added to what's 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 his name again? This guy. This is uh, uh, Luke. Yeah, that Luke. 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 I've been trying to get him. Uh, 
on Monero talk for quite some time. Yeah, that's Rudowski. the same guy that does with like those Tim Pool guys, those uh, yeah, right yeah. wing yeah, guys. Yeah. yeah, I think it's very important if we get in contact with them, so it will like help to shift the Overton window. Because for Monero, it's very, even for any privacy coin, it's very important to shift the Overton window. Because those people that technically they do not know about open source tech as well as privacy coin that much. Look, even if you look at their tech, if you have observed them, they will talk about Linux, but they are basically using Windows and Mac and iPhones. So yeah, it's important to, for shifting the Overton window, we have to get in contact with them somehow. Yeah, I've been trying. I've been trying to get in contact. I've met him at Pork yeah, Fest. Yeah, Fiat Demise is the man. That's awesome that he reached out to that guy. That was that was pretty gangster. Yeah, that worked out very well. Um, but yeah, let's let's try to get a tip. Let's try to get a Monero super chat up and running on here. Let's see if we can do it. Do it. I, mean, I mean, I know a few I know people it. who know him, so I could uh, pass pass some messages along. Try and get a hold of him. Oh yeah, please do, man. Please do. So I went to the Trucker Convoy website and I asked them to accept, start accepting Monero. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Any response? No, nothing. nothing. <laughs> All right. Okay. You know, you got you start, you start mentioning it and you start talking about it. And, you know, it, eventually, you know, you might start getting through. Right. So you just got to keep after it. Yep. That's awesome. Um, let's talk about the Magic Monero Fund raising money for VT Nerd. VT Nerd has been developing for Monero since like 2016, so a long, long time. Let's go ahead and click on the link. Oops, actually, no. What am I doing? Okay. So um, go ahead to monerofund.org and then find. Um, find this uh, donation request for VT Nerd and make sure that you donate. This is pretty big. Uh, he's currently seeking to raise $28,000 uh, to work for quarter one and quarter two. It's a lot of work. And um, yeah. He's, on, what is he, he's working on Monero LWS. That's the, the, the light wild server. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's, I mean, this guy's been around for a long time. We've had him at, he's been at both of the Monero Topias old school uh og monero dev does a ton of work for monero development usually working on like network related things mm -hmm. dandelion plus plus and all that stuff yeah was he not the dev who is doing like you know, noise protocol stuff like p2p network level more, yes. increasing the privacy of that one yeah yeah exactly and he's going to put a lot of work in this project. This proposal found founds uh, 480 hours of work, so about three months. That's a lot of hours. Yes, a, maybe, maybe we'll get him to uh, attend Monerotopia in Argentina as well. Yeah. Would be fantastic. That will be awesome. Okay. Let's talk about Dark Web. Uh, this is something that uh, Doug wrote on, on Twitter. So dark web is trending. If you're just learning about it, you might not be surprised to learn that Bitcoin's first use case was as the currency of the dark markets. Makes sense because it's anonymous internet money, right? Wrong. It is not. Uh, Bitcoin is actually designed to be traceable, given its transparent ledger, making it a really poor tool for making anonymous private transactions on the internet. But Monero, on the contrary, was invented a few years after Bitcoin with improvements to make it function as untraceable digital cash. It has replaced Bitcoin as preferred currency of dark markets. And then you mentioned Donald Tor, you know, uh, BC. Yeah, I, I, I jumped on it because I just thought it was interesting. Dark web was trending on Twitter. It was a top trending, uh, top trender for like 24 hours or whatever. And so I thought it was a good opportunity to try to uh, ri ride the wave, ride the inertia there a little bit and get the word out to people who are interested in dark web. Anecdotally, I've been seeing this too. Just among you know, in my among the normies in my day to day, I'm hearing more people like talk about the dark web, uh, like family member, like people are like, oh, you know, like the dark web's a real thing. You're like, yes, yes, it is. And like uh, people are, I, for whatever reason, it is starting to trend uh, and leach out into into the normie world. And like we said, this is shifting the Overton window, right? You're you're watching that happen. So as normies start to realize. 
the dark web maybe really isn't all that dark, right? It's just you could use Tor, you could access these onion onion sites. It's not just about drugs and uh, illegal activity. It's about censorship resistant free speech, people out there spreading information in a way that can't be stopped. Kind of like what the internet used to be back in the day when it first started, yes. <laughs> um, so I think people are, are starting to realize that to the, to the point where we saw it be the top trending topic. And I was just trying to use that as a moment to enlighten people about Monero as well. Um, why was it trending? Why was dark web trending? I'm not entirely sure. I, I put out another tweet because what also was trending that day was if you scroll down, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, this. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why why was it trending? Uh, also trending that day was was invasion, right? So if anybody's been paying attention to politics in the u.s there's got that whole issue going on 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 the on the southern, oh, yeah, border. The southern border yeah so there's this uh movement that's taking place where you have u.s citizens that are thinking they may want to kind of take things into their own hand go help out texas defend the border whether or not you agree with these things whatever your political persuasion is the point is there's a group of people that are looking to take political action that are trying to coordinate uh and with that is it is, is there comes the need to also coordinate funding right so just interesting yeah uh, it's great maybe, for monero maybe that's why we're seeing the rise in dark web searches i tried to do a little research on ecstasy if that's what was popping up and i did see some correlation there i think it could be that you know th this the sector of people was maybe trying to figure out how they can go on on the dark web and post information and kind of use it in a way to accomplish whatever it is they're trying to accomplish in terms of coordinating together, getting information out, realizing that you know the, the clear net is often censored and controlled. Um, yeah, so yeah, actually, the clear net. Uh, the thing is, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if we get to shift the Overton window more, I think we will see in the future the clear net will change dramatically. So. I think the dark net, which uh, actually it should be the real internet. So because there is no encryption on the clear net, it's like a bad version. Like all the problem we are facing with IP address and the telecom industry, it all started with the Radio and Communication Act. So yeah, unless we shift the Overton window more, uh, it will really help our movement with Monero as well as the two-way community. I just want to state for the record that Body has been on a rampage regarding both the technical and the political rants about this whole like border civil war, dark web, all of that. Like I got a tremendous amount of joy catching up with all the things that he had to say. And if anybody has not, you really should just scroll through the uh the trail of blood and gore that is bodies twitter threads lately <laughs> thanks bro yeah i mean it's it's an unfortunate situation where people are the are problem is they're being played onto the two yeah problem reaction solution they're being played onto the two sides it's um it's unfortunate because it's very predictable and it's like that no one most people aren't seeing like from a clear philosophical logical perspective here and both sides both the fed boys and the state boys um have like some slightly valid points but they just don't understand how flawed they are buddy what, what's your take on this on what we're seeing here do you think that this dark web search trend had anything to do with what was happening down in texas and everything i'm saying here do you what, what, what is your take um i could offer like the worst of speculative speculations but i, I really don't know i haven't um i'm not really apprised of like the uptick in the dark web um like the extra searches in dark web and whatnot. It, it seems plausible, like it, it could be, um, but I, I really wouldn't be able to say. Yeah, the problem is that the most of the dark web is dominated by the Onion Network and there are flaws with the Onion Network. Yeah, it's getting improved with, there is a Rust client being developed RT, but the thing is, we generally want even the IPFS as well as the I2P or the new one, Valdi, it's coming out. It's all rust. Uh, 
I think uh, we have to look at all of those freedom tech. Those should be mainly focused on the Rust programming languages. I just, and, yeah, I just want to add on top of what he's saying here. It's not that any of those of us who are super in favor of adding other networks other than the Tor network, we're not trying to hate on Tor. What we would like to see is a massive plethora of options that are not the clear net where everything that the clear net can do for people can be done better on at least one of those platforms. So I2P is amazing for a lot of things. So is Tor. Tor is amazing for a lot of things, right? Or the Dandelion Plus Plus, the way that uh, that Monero does its uh, connection bounces. All of these things are really good at what they're designed to do. But one of the reasons why I've been so loud about the Oxen network, people who are in this space are totally sleeping on the Oxen network. That like what it stands to be is absolutely amazing. Or they don't call it the Oxen network, but the Oxen team, they're uh, what is it Loki net? Yeah, the Loki net. It, it what it what it could be is amazing. So I, I hope that people realize having an alternative to the Tor network for the dark web that people actually use is crucial. And I think that your guest did a really good job of highlighting some of the reasons why we need it so bad. Yeah, and the problem with is the Onion network is that they also have the same issue like Bitcoin is having, like it's capped with those minimum megabytes. So that's the problem. Onion network is actually very good, but you will see like deep down there is artificial restriction. So I2P doesn't have the, that problem, but I2P has another set of problem. Like it's fully Java client. It has to be like Rust based. You know, I'd point out that uh, every additional network reduces the attack surface for each individual network. It reduces the value of attacking the Tor network when it's also simultaneously available on other networks using other platforms. The more options we have, in, a, in an odd way, it reduces the attack surface, not the other way around, because the incentive for attacking it in one area is highly diminished if it's available in another area. Okay, um, let's move on. So, um, Maxi Derangement Syndrome tweeted, it turns out the Wasabi Wallet wrap that integrated chain analysis in his mixer wants to make a move to another industry if someone impressed him. He's already receiving invites, such as the Monero Talk host, inviting him to work on <laughs> Monero. Um, so. uh, I love that. I love that. And oh, then, that's great. And then I saw another post later where somebody is, uh, took a post, a post from Dread where there's like this rumor that Nopara is going to go work for Monero. And it, it all came from the interview I had with him where I just in passing, I said, would you consider working on the Monero protocol? That's just pretty funny. It's hilarious. I didn't Any even know what a maxi was. Is great. <laughs> yeah, why would we? Why would we want not like? So they're they're suggesting that we shouldn't want no power to even like <laughs> contribute code to Monero because he's so so corrupted that now he's going to destroy Monero. I love oh, the way that they talk. Oh, they the, talk uh, about Doug like he is the gatekeeper for yeah. whether or not people work on Monero. It's like Doug, like the leader of Monero, is inviting this guy. It's like. Okay, bro. <laughs> Hello, good Whoever's day. Whoever's trying to join the stream yard, it's full. Sorry if it's blocking you. There's too many people in here. Hello, good day. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, so, uh, Prancing, Prancing was just saying that he does not even know or didn't know what a maximalist is. And I wanted to repeat what I said two shows ago. Um, basically, the amount of fastest machines mining Monero is roughly 10,000. And the amount of fastest machines mining Bitcoin is, let's say, a million. So the objective thing that Bitcoiners have to be 100 times bigger than us is that supremacy of having 100 times more hash rate. Yeah. Got it. 
Yeah, I can see why there's a lot of uh, animosity uh, shown. But thank you for that. Well, if samurai devs can make a like samurai swap with Monero, I think Wasabi should also do the same. I think those cash fusion guys, they should also do one of those. Yeah, it will like improve Monero anyway. So it's good for us anyway. Yeah, the more the better, the more the better. But yeah, I, I'm not the person who decides who gets to work on Monero, guys. Just <laughs> <laughs> do, not, do not send your resume to me. <laughs> um, all right, let's keep it funny. Yeah, so this one is actually from Samurai Wallet in October. Uh, they wrote, we asked our attorney to assemble an expert legal team to respond to FinCEN's proposed rules that would effectively ban Bitcoin. Bitcoin's privacy best practices, such as not reusing addresses and coin join. Last night, our letter was submitted. And just to read a little bit, uh, they wrote, we appreciate the opportunity to comment on docket number da -da -da. Released by the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network on October 22nd, 2023, we are a variety of unaffiliated companies that rely on important cybersecurity safeguards and privacy enabling software to protect our businesses and our users. It's, it's so it's a long, um, it's a long response. Yeah, so this was, um, this was in response to, uh, look, if you could go to the top, I can't read anything because you're moving it all. Oh, sorry. Which one do you want? Uh, if you just go to the top. This one, yeah. Yeah, so the right they're they're, they're proposing the the FinCEN is proposing to to initiate these these new regulations underneath the Patriot Act, right? Where basically uh, banks and other uh, money service providers or um, uh, you know anybody that that's that's dealing with money that's considered a money transfer, um, like exchanges, whatnot. If these new regulations were to come to pass, uh, these exchanges would be required to fill out reports if they know that the, the the cryptocurrency they receive was was previously mixed, quote unquote mixed, right? Um, and th this was proposed a few few months ago uh, by FinCEN, and now um, Samurai Wallet, along with others, got together and they submitted their their arguments to FinCEN as to why. Uh, basically, the, the regulations they're looking to pass are, are too drastic and unnecessary, and would, um, you know, are, are basically unconstitute, potentially unconstitutional, all that stuff, right? Like it, you shouldn't be attacking privacy tools, let people use them. So interesting to see uh, how this is all going to play out with FinCEN. And if you know, we, we had we talked about this on the show months ago, uh, FinCEN's. The, the way they're defining um, mixing is, is very broad, right? So it certainly takes into account something like Samurai and the tools that they're building, and it even uh, arguably encompasses Monero itself, right? And so anybody, uh, if this were to come to pass, anybody that's using Monero or that swaps in from Bitcoin, or, or if, it's, if it's somehow noticed, right? We were talking about how these BTC to XMR atomic swaps, it might be it might be noticeable that you performed a, a swap, arguably, right? And now you have your 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 Bitcoin and you send to an exchange. Exchange is like, wait, we saw that that you you know you did a swap here. Um, you know now you're on a list, and we're notifying FinCEN. Um, so that's what this is. That's what this is all about. I think it's I think it's kind of funny, right? So I hate to make this like me constantly being annoyed by samurai but i think it's i think it's great that they did this but i think it's kind of a uh, uh, ironic and hypocritical because i think i feel like if somebody else were to do this in the in the industry um they would be asking why are you why are you even uh t dev right the t dev he's the most badass guy in crypto he's the cypherpunk he would be saying why are you even engaging with governments and asking them for permission uh, just build and and don't ask for permission. So I think it's kind of funny that Samurai here is actually went in the other direction. I applaud them for doing it, and they teamed up with a lot of the like the company and services that they're normally trying to curse off uh, on on the internet. So that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eventually, if you were the surface web, like yeah, they teamed up. Yeah, with like, like eventually, uh, it will be like tornado cash developers like if you are in the surface web and if you are public 
they will you you have to know that they will come after you that's why it's better monero we have to shift the networks the dark nets yeah we'll see what happens with this new proposed fincen uh, regulations if it actually comes to pass it's not going to make yeah, mixing, they, it's not making monero illegal or anything but it's saying that these exchanges these money service providers will now have to fill out these actual extra reports if they believe that their customers have previously mixed or used something like monero does anybody remember i think it was like four weeks ago body and i got into it in a good way where we were talking about how no this is like two months ago actually but i digress we were talking about how there was some really strong evidence that the powers that be had literally no choice but to spend the rest of their i guess you could call it ammunition um and exhaust tools that they had been using to suppress the price control the flow of monero keep people away from the on and off ramps Remember how we were talking about how it didn't make sense for the cabal to be making the decisions that they were making unless th their hand was forced. Does everybody remember that who was there anyway? Yep, I remember it. Well, I, remember. I think that, yeah, we now have much more evidence than we did at the time that that was theorized. That these people are willing to throw away all of the best ammunition that they have for some unknown reason and i would wonder if perhaps like the predictive algorithms that are available to the powers that be have them spooked about the potential value of things like monero in some kind of revolution that they see on the horizon or, i don't know i'm just guessing but i'm just yeah. saying like there's a lot of reason to believe that they are freaked out right now for them to just be throwing everything that they have sitting in the wings and getting people all stirred up and like saying Monero publicly. Remember, I was like, oh, they're only going to start using the word Monero or XMR when they basically ha don't have a choice anymore. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. We have to because they're intentionally avoiding even using the name of Monero in the public as well as the political sphere. So for the Monero community, it's very important. Right now with the recent events, it will get more tough. So we have to infiltrate the other side as make sure Monero is pretty much infiltrated in all those communities. So they will be forced to mention the name. And the more they mention the name, the more they try to make sure like developers getting arrested and everything, the more the Overton window will shift because the, think, the enemies will try to get after privacy coins as well as the guns because that's their number one target. So one thing so I've I is that, go ahead, um, sorry. That in the past, uh, let's just say circa 2019, 2020, we actually saw Fed Boys mentioning Monero in their publications, talking about how they had significant problems. In fact, it was one of the very few coins that was actually mentioned by name. And then mysteriously, Monero started disappearing from all those publications. They started issuing reports about dark net market volumes and, and uh, stuff like that, that was notably absent Monero. Um, and I think that was on purpose. So in some ways, that's a bit of an indication of like the level of planning and intelligence that these guys have. They really didn't see this. Um, they didn't understand it until really the normies kind of started seeing it and understanding it. And then they're like, oh, shit, we need to stop mentioning this coin so it doesn't give it uh, more visibility. And we're kind of in that, um, you know, we're maybe we're exiting that ignore them phase and maybe we're we're just starting to get into the um, into the fight you phase. But they are trying to keep as covert as possible to fight this. But um, as as they force and more and more try and force Monero to be removed from exchanges, um, I mean, they're going to continue to use the same cover tactics that we've seen them use, where they, they try not to mention Monero, but they will they will do it more and more as, as they have to. Yeah, and there, another target is end-to-end -end encryption. Hey, you guys want a quick update on... Um, you want to update on the... the my, yeah, uh, I would love to hear how the cake pay thing resolved. So... Uh, so the cake pay, uh, I, so I'll summarize, uh, three weeks fighting with customer support of both the card issuer and the, and the uh, cake pay. And 
really nobody's very helpful. Uh, no, uh, that nobody's willing to talk about. Uh, they're, they're pointing fingers at each other, and nobody's willing to talk about that. So I came on Monero Talk, and five days later, uh, you know, uh, well, three days, uh, two days later, I had uh, Daniel from Cake Pay contact me, and then uh, you know, by the fifth day, I, the 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 full amount of Monero was returned to my wallet, and the issue is completely resolved. But I think uh, there's two things uh, they need to do better with customer service, and also uh, I think they need to do better with delineating the fact that you you have to uh, specify the difference between a gift card and a and a regular Visa card. Visa card is all KYC, regardless of Monero. Uh, a, a proper Visa card, but uh, a Visa gift card is a gift card that's intended to go to somebody else. So it doesn't have your name, your KYC attached to it. And that wasn't well uh, spelled out in the some of the advertising. So I think the the, the community as a whole, and, and certainly Cake Pay to work with their providers to delineate that in a more uh, succinct fashion. So people know what they're getting into. But all in all, I'm just happy that uh, I had a, 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 a decent outcome. And, uh, you know, nothing would preclude me from doing business with Cake Pay again. And I'm, I'm grateful for Daniel's help and, uh, and Monero talk for, uh, you know, bringing it to a head. I just want to also add, I think it was Privacy Dad had questions about reasons why a person would even want to use some of these tools yeah, yeah and yeah. to think somebody who is that literate in the privacy space not knowing the massive litany of reasons why such a thing would be advantageous right just shows our tech is absolutely amazing and bleeding edge and i guess marketing is like 100% Doug and Vic and their teams, right? Like we have nobody marketing the value that Monero and these related services are bringing to the table. And it just goes to show you that if somebody who is literally like one of the faces of this space, which is Privacy Dad, and another guy, our friend here who is decently tech literate and is well aware of the need for these things, we have technology that is so ahead of the curve as far as like people getting out of the system and protecting their privacy and people don't even know what it's for right like we really need to start pivoting a little bit more of our efforts and resources into not just adoption which is a big deal but also just making people aware of what it does and what the need for these things are because we we don't really have guys doing that. And I think there's a place for a lot of people who are all about Monero, but aren't devs. Oh, what can I do about it? Well, there you go, right there. Get out yeah. there and explain to people what the purpose of these tools are, right? Go out there and explain to people who are curious. But more importantly, you know, make a friendly user guide. Make a for, you know make yourself available for just a little while if somebody have questions or somebody wants a, a live tutorial or make a YouTube video or whatever. Like people who are knowledgeable in this space are struggling to understand why some of these tools even exist. Oh, I just yeah. want to comment on the uh, your cake pay issue, Prancing. Um, I'm glad it was resolved. I'm sorry if it took a while. I I don't know exactly what what it was. Um, because I'm not in support. But one of the main issues I, I do notice is that uh, if we're dealing with an issue with our provider, we a lot of the time it's just waiting, waiting for them to respond, waiting for them to deal with their issue. So that's probably why it took a while to get it resolved. But also I'll comment on the uh, the Visa and MasterCards. Yeah, those ones, they do ask for a lot of information. And I'm not saying this officially, uh, but you sort of can just use fake information which is not an official cake position uh but i've done that myself and you should totally not do that, that of course yeah it's, no you know, it's like we, bad. Don't do that. we're here but telling you, you that it is very important that you don't do, do it 
We might be. Well, I may, I, I may have made a mistake and, and done something that may per be perceived to have done that. <laughs> and that's why I kind of thought that that's why the card wasn't working anywhere. So I just, you know, I was at the stage where I just want to get my money and get out and, 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 you know, lesson learned kind of thing. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I won't do it with that particular one, but I have done it and I'm testing, see, I'm testing all these different methods. I'm testing one that I just did from Stealth S and uh, it, it has one that's a gift card and it asks your name, but it doesn't ask all that other KYC stuff and the name never prints up on the card. So it's, it's more of a gift card. Uh, so I'm more, I'm, I'm more encouraged about that one. Basically, I've made it my mission to test all these things as a newbie and just learn how to use Monero and try to make it work in the United States, you know, and we'll see, see how I go. And I'll try to keep some notes and maybe tabulate some of this for, for training materials later on. One thing I will note is that you you'll need to whatever you're paying with you need to um, obviously have the same name, but also that the card is these virtual cards sometimes don't work with everything. There'll there'll be some things occasionally they don't work with, um, but I'll I'll definitely look into seeing if we can get something like that virtual. What'd you say it was just a it was a Visa gift card like a vanilla gift card that you can buy like yeah. in the store, but it was one on yeah. a website. What site was that on? Uh, stealth S. Okay, I'll, that's interesting. I'll take a look because that would be that would be great having one. That's, and it's all like, done without your free. email or anything. It's all done right there. It shows the blockchain accepting uh, the Monero after you send it out of your wallet. Yeah, like you leave the web page well, up. That's wow. great. Pretty cool. Go ahead. All right, guys. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's keep it moving. But uh, as Alaskanam was saying, right, this is a, it's also about building out the circular economy, right? I, I'm I'm waiting for the day I could just continually just push people to XMR Bazaar, um, because yeah, for those who don't code and are looking for to figure out what they can do to help Monero, you could teach people about it, teach people about the importance of of cash itself and that cash is being eliminated and we're going to need some replacement and i think the other thing you can do is actively start using it and prov providing goods and services for it that's like an amazing step forward is actually building out the circular economy that's going to be one of the easiest most important things we we can all do i mean we could do it now uh but and, and there's obviously other means but i'm excited about trying to create a way to make it super super user friendly where we could just direct people to this you want to do something for Monero? All right, just start selling goods and services for it, or start you know purchasing goods and services for it peer to peer. That's how that's how we that's how we win. Everything nothing else matters at that point. We've opted out. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the when people starting to wake up by sh the shift of the Overton window, because the enemies they want to ban uh, end to end encryption, they want to ban guns, they want to ban gold, they want to and cash payments. So when you have like your uh, software solutions such as Graphene OS or like Linux phones or even privacy coin Monero or like 3D printing of guns or even like Simplex, those chat apps, which are like highly private. So once you have those options and you direct people to those options, naturally they will just go mingle and then the adoption will grow anyway. So I, I think after Nostra, I think we should have a Monero client for the simplex chat app. So people will just use it directly. Awesome. Okay, let's move on now. Um, let's talk about the proposed, let's keep talking about FinCEN a little bit. And um, the proposed FinCEN rule to soft criminalize virtually any privacy seeking crypto transaction. Now, this is a comment from Coin Center on the proposal of special measure regarding convertible virtual currency mixing as a class of transactions of primary money laundering concern. You can go to federalregister.gov to find the document and read the whole the whole thing uh, from uh, from FinCEN. Basically, the summary of this document is that um, 
they are um, issuing a notice. Yeah, this is the same. This is what we were just talking about. I believe it's the same, the same regulation, right? I believe this mm-hmm. is the same. And this is what uh, Samurai had responded to. Yep. Um, yeah, it's under under the Patriot Act. They're proposing these these new regulations where essentially they're they're defining what what it, what it is to to mix and try to conceal your your history in crypto, uh, and mandating that money service providers provide reports if they think that that's what's taking place. It's the same. Yep. Same thing. Yep. Okay. Now let's talk about your selections. Our CBDC is becoming hyper-politicized. Um, central bank digital currencies are becoming more politicized globally, but in the U.S. they are they seem to be hyper-politicized. So um, talks about Trump, his stance on uh, the CBDC, how he would never allow a digital dollar to um, in the United States. Uh, then Biden actively working on a CBDC. It also mentioned how the sent Ron DeSantis um stop candidating as a president and now he's supporting trump uh but they're they're both against um uh, cbdc's and it's interesting how now when you're thinking about who you're going to vote as a president you need to see what their stance is on the cbdc um yeah that's great like when cbdc's are hyper politicized i think it's great for monero we should encourage the politicize the political inclination of like anti-CBDC, pro-CBDC stance. So yeah, it will really help Monero. It's going to help Monero. It's going to help uh, people uh, to choose as well too as well because it's a their stance on the CBDC will tell a lot about them as a future president and what they're going to, to what, show uh, their character as well as the litmus test. It will help I, the privacy I, litmus <clears throat> test. I just want to remind everybody that uh, this this is actually pretty traditional in these races. In fact, you can go back to Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson kept us out of the Great War, guys. He kept America out of World War I. That was like what he ran on. And then the first thing he did when he became re-elected was he dragged everybody into World War I, right? I mean, we, we have to remember that the idea behind political cult of personality is to try to get everybody behind a guy by saying all the right things. So when he backpedals one issue at a time, people find excuses to still like the guy, right? It's the, and this, this is one of those things about CBDCs. I mean, for one, you know, Trump has known about them for years now because he's talked about them many times all kinds of people have talked to, with him about it. And yet he claims, oh, thanks to Vivek Ramaswamy, I just heard about this. Well, if he's willing to lie about the fact that he just heard about it, right, for political clout and why he hasn't wow. chimed in and so on. I mean, we already know that the guy is like full of it. But then on top of it, go ahead. He'll say anything to get in. And, uh, you know, it's. You know, he 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 was a Democrat before he was a Republican, right? Everybody well, just needs to know that, right? So wasn't he the good. same guy who did like bump stock ban? Wasn't he yeah. the same guy that did bump stock but ban? But uh, like outside of the politics thing, because like I think ninety percent of the audience is anarchist and doesn't like any of these people. But I'm just saying, what we need to remember, it is a safe assumption that these people are going to pivot. Honestly, I was blown away that Millet did even anything that he said he was going to do, right? Like I just assumed it was never going to happen and let's just keep fixing technical problems with technical solutions, right? But there is one beautiful thing that can come out of the fact that it's being brought public is there are all of these people and it's the same guys you would always expect, right? Which is like, the minute they come for my guns, that's when I'm going to whatever. Or the minute that they come for my whatever, that's where I'm going to whatever. Well, there's a lot of people saying that CBDCs are the issue that they are going to stand on as far as whether or not they are going to continue supporting their government or paying taxes or whatever. We have a beautiful opportunity to screen cap and record all of these people claiming that CBDCs are the issue, that that is the hill that they are willing to die on, right? 
and showing them when it inevitably happens, <laughs> you said this was the hill that you were willing to die on, right? And holding their feet to the fire that this is going to be the thing that they are not going to budge on. They are not going to let the government have that kind of power. But we've already also seen that, you know, when, when the when the Wu flu restrictions hit, most people, they just they just caved. Or when the bump stock thing hit, oh, well, yeah, I mean, I don't care about that Second Amendment. It was the other Second Amendments that I stand for, right? It's a chance to expose the hypocrisy of these people if, you know, if, if we record them saying or doing. But we also need to remember that it, it, like if it's going mainstream, if they're publicly talking about it, oh, we've been working on a CBDC and now Trump is talking about it too. You know it's coming soon, so we better have our parallel economy in place, ready to roar. Get ready to beta test oh, XMR Bazaar. Get ready to beta test all of these other things that are coming down the pike. You know, make sure that you know at least one way to atomic swap. Make sure that you know at least one way to stay in touch with your local community outside of the the clear net chat and so on as we always talk about so that's yeah, my yeah i would like to point out sense. another fact yeah i would like to point out another fact like yeah we i think everyone over here will know that the other side the democratic party or the leftists they are like the main enemy but yeah even if we think like melee trump or vivek or even DeSantis, they are controlled opposition it's still better to have them because it will shift it will help us shift the overton window our our target is uh, to shift the overton window so even if they are control opposition and they will later on betray us it's still better because we will have the screenshot that look we said it will happen like that but still it will wake up more people because the idea the spread of idea will be there of anti cbdc of privacy coin of free printed guns of constitution carry of open carry of permitless ca concealed carry i think those ideas should be there so unless we have like you'll see like yeah Republican presidency, like Trump presidency, he did bump stock ban. But oh, on his time, we had like so much constitution carry, so much permitless carry. Even many of the state have open carry. So yeah, it's still good to have that effect. Like it will help us to shift. We should always think what will help us as a movement to shift the Overton window. Yeah, they will be control opposition. Like the, our enemies have uh, like puppets in both parties but still we have to look out which will help us to shift the overton window well the right is nothing but the left going the speed limit and as far as um oh i just lost my train of thought darn it but yeah the, the right is nothing but the left going the speed limit oh yep, and politician you can tell you, you can tell when a politician is lying by when they open their mouth and talk <laughs> uh, I would the like to repeat. I would like to repeat the point. I was checking um, statistics today, and it got me quite worried. I had another idea, and I wasn't really um, realizing this: is that in America alone there are five thousand data centers. Then the next big thing is Germany with around three hundred. Hetzna is a really big one, and these are like rows of. 1400 amd epics so if we say that okay monero has roughly 50k amd epics on single board single cpus running so my question is aren't you guys worried that uh i i don't understand why the irs uh puts out the bounty to crack monero they factually just need to put one of their data centers like 5000 data centers each data center just running 10 uh, epics, and there you go. You already have 50,000. You mine empty blocks for three months. Monero price goes to zero, and we all get a reality check. I think this is really important to realize. Um, I don't know. Well, for one, I'd point out that if you have uh, the archived chain and you see this, you see the hash rate spike like that, you have frozen in time all of the Monero up to that point, right? 
but then the other side to that is um it of course yeah i mean a lot of us are super worried about the the mining no no sorry all even, of even worse sorry even worse because it has a dynamic block size so even worse than empty box it's a spam filled box and it rises like after 10 hours to i don't know how many megabytes uh and plus that every john doe is going to be running to buy a new terabyte and that is really reality check I mean, yeah, this is definitely a serious concern Arctic Mine had a really good idea about this too, um, and this is one of the reasons why. Uh, what's that called when you parallel process a chain that automatically mines another chain? What's the word for that again? Merge mining. Um, merge merge mining. Mine, yeah. yeah, merge mining, especially with something that has like kind of smart contracts going on or something, something highly complementary to Monero, would be ideal. Um, and there's there's a lot of reasons why like the mining issue with Monero I mean we're we're also talking about something that is a little a little bit far fetched right um but only in the sense that like it it is still feasible it is still possible and if it becomes enough of a threat then why not right um but on the flip side the the fact that a sophisticated hacker or somebody renting server space or somebody in control of rentable server space uh you know there's a lot of alternate ways that a person could combat that so well and remember the the irs and the nsa and the dod and all these people need something for their black budgets and if they're going to get rid of dollars, like physical dollars that they can carry around in a suitcase, they're going to need a digital version of that. And they're sure as hell not going to pay their bribes in Bitcoin. No way. Yep, that's so, right. So, that's right. Even and even if there is a risk of the that, that like we could just hard fork to a, a, another algorithm, and it's business as usual. And I think yeah, that's like, a good argument, Bob. I two P. That's a good argument. I wanted to, to yeah. give a joke. Um, why why do Bitcoin plebs need to lower their time preference? Because yeah, the they, thing should, is, like, they should need they need to wait to transact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing is, yeah, like uh, over no, here. No, but it's true. Like, uh, the, it's serious. It's yeah, like the, what? Yeah, the thing is that uh, for like the Monero, I will tell specifically the culture. Like, if you have a culture like not for, of like soft forks or like small blocks, but if you just have a culture of maximum privacy, uh, suppose you see like uh, there is a threat, like massive uh, supercomputers they are mining empty blocks, so we'll just have to hard fork to change the algo. Or if you have that same culture, that then you will understand understand that uh, those CIA, they need their blank budget. So they will, unless when there is like CBDCs forced down our throat, there is no amount of cash anymore. So they will start using Monero because it's the most effective currency. So yeah, there is lots of options. I mean, and did also, you know, Bitcoin face this in the early days as well. Why, why is Monero completely different in this regard? Um, yeah the government would be better by playing by the rules and taking their data centers and mining Monero and using it legit than they would be to attack the network. Yeah, because they, they will have like an extreme advantage to get more coins. So they will have to be like extremely stupid to waste their resources unnecessarily. And right. And these are 5,000 5, data centers, man. That's not an argument. It would be just a piece of cake. These massive data centers, you just check them on YouTube and statistics and it's a horror. How, how is this different than the early days of Bitcoin? Uh, because where... now Bitcoin is 100 times uh, more no, with not, hash rate. I mean, now. I'm, I'm, like Bitcoin faced this problem and somehow made it through it. Why, why, was, why, why is Monero any different in this regard? Uh, well, you at that time sure it was you're... using ASICs and it was already past the in my in my view 
if they would have the, the only argument, the reasonable one is that in the early days, if they wanted to try that, they probably saw that if they uh, bought, buy all the ASICs from Ant, Ant Miner, uh, from Bitmain, they couldn't do it. So I guess the immaculate birth of uh, Bitcoin at uh, then later, five years later, uh, prohibited that because the machines were too much. But now, in fact, it's scary that the machines are not uh, too much in Monero. And this is a okay. thing that everyone should be aware of. Why haven't they done it yeah. already? If, if, right. if I don't I know. Would, I, I, I just... theory was there with Bitcoin, right? There was a time where it could have been done with Bitcoin, and, and, and it didn't happen for whatever reason, whatever the dynamic was. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. And so, you have to look at the. the, the I can. I can actually answer why it hasn't happened. Though. I can tell you why it hasn't happened with a pretty high degree of certainty, which is number one, that these data centers, even at their current size and scale and so on, between the amount that they have to run for upkeep for what they're already being utilized to do on top of the fact that the technological proficiency of, I mean, so anybody who has ever, you remember uh, mining Ethereum with GPUs and trying to build these ever more complicated mining rigs with GPUs, trying to chain together GPU after GPU after GPU. And now those are things that are literally designed to run parallel processing. You know, GPUs are so good at mining Ethereum as a cluster for the reasons that GPUs are good at what GPUs are for, right? Now, using like a, 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 an endless, like a massive epic processor database. Well, here's the thing. Monero seems to have the best efficacy rate, I think, isn't it in Ryzen, like third gen or whatever. So there are specific processors that have a huge efficiency advantage for one um and arm but then the other thing is is managing the cooling managing the the technical proficiency for actually getting all of these processors to do what they're being asked to do and then removing that talent that hardware that energy and so on from what it is already being allocated for so now think about the value of that so you could also say well the people who front run the stock market for a living right the stock market front runner people well they have all of the hardware necessary for doing the same thing right they could easily mine empty blocks or you know spam blocks or whatever but they don't well why because that what they stand to gain using those computer systems for what they're intended for the way that they are being used now versus deploying the technical expertise to make the computer systems do what you're suggesting. For one, there's no guarantee of success. For two, they're using them now to front run the market for amazing profits. And then for three, what is the incentive of driving Monero down to zero? Only you for a whole bunch of people before, to hard for it. You would short well, it before, of course. I don't yeah, try, but, you, but I guess... You can't exactly short Monero the way that you can front run and short the market, right? Oh, but shorting yeah. Monero and is actually kind of tricky in large volumes, right? I mean, and you I mean to, that's what you do instead of banning it. That's what you do yeah, instead and, of banning it. And you that's, have to look at the yeah. argument like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Their majority of the blocks, they are being mined by OFAC factor those they're already like censored like they have that ocean pool they have that OFAC list of some addresses in both bitcoin as well as the ethereum like those uh, even if you tell like uh, asic like heavy intensive use of asics in bitcoin as well as intensive use of proof of stake those both chains are like getting heavily censored so Monero's random acts strategy, as well as the culture of hard forks, it will actually have give Monero more advantage instead of disadvantage. So if there yeah. is a threat, they will will just hard fork it, and if there is a threat, uh, we'll just switch the random acts algo a little bit. So they they got they got wasted doing their stuff. 
those data centers are are already being used for things like monitoring U.S. phone calls, ask the NSA, or people's emails. So they can either monitor people's emails with this data center, or they can mine Monero and not monitor the emails. They have to choose. They can't do both of them because the computers can't do both. So they've got to choose what's more important to them. Yeah, that's but why that, Monero that said, needs... it, it is uh. something that we have to consider. And earlier, the dev report, Hundhausen was saying, uh, you know, like th there are alternative Monero chains and alternative programming languages being used to build the same feature set. And wouldn't it be cool if somebody came along with the idea of like merge mining both of those on top of like a, you know, a smart contract chain or whatever? There are a lot of, of uh, solutions available, at least theoretically, right now that we could start deploying right now. And yeah, that's why I said for Monero, I think largely we have to infiltrate those Second Amendment communities because once we have those, then we will have a huge reach for, for political space as well as the public sphere because those gun manufacturers will need, as well as those precious metal guys, they will need uh, to withdraw somehow their value. They have to exchange their value somehow. So when there is a ban on cash or forced implementation of digital ID or CBDC or social credit, so Monero will get a huge advantage compared to those. So it's actually very important for the group to like infiltrate those other groups and like uh, advertise the Monero and its features and give them the direction that way. All right, let's keep, let's keep moving. Tony, you still there? Yeah, Tony, yeah, yeah. I'm listening. <laughs> Are you <alive? laughs> Okay, and let's talk about uh, Bank of England. So we've been having England, the US, and a couple of countries heavily researching and looking into CBDCs. But then they would say, turn around and say that we haven't made a final decision on the CBDC, and the UK is one of them. So they said in response to a consultation paper on UK CBDC, the bank and HM Treasury said that um, they had not decided to launch a digital pound, but intended to protect access to cash, which is interesting. So um, they also mentioned that they intended to focus on privacy and control. And what, 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 does, what, what does control mean? What, what do you mean how, how can you put privacy and control in the same, in the same sentence? For me, it's more coming yeah, from Yeah, those the are oxymorons. <laughs> Yes. No, no, no. They said exactly what they mean. Privacy for me, control for thee. Exactly. See, they're yeah. focusing on privacy and control. Exactly. It's kind of like privacy for the state, but control for everyone else. Exactly. It's like the government giving you because they want to continue their like front running, like black uh, this one black budget as well as like cartel functions. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's kind of like the government giving you an apartment. You have curtains, it's enclosed. You have all kinds of security measures at the front door, so nobody can get in. But they they have the key, so they can get in any time. So technically, you have privacy, but then any time they can just go. I believe that's called a prison, sir. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, privacy and control, and then January twenty fifth notice. Bank of, Bank of England said no final decision has been made regarding launching a digital pound. So they're in the talks, but they want to protect access to cash. They want to uh, give residents an additional payment choice. It's also funny how uh, the British people refer to the uh, digital pound as the Britcoin. I thought that was funny. Um, so this is what this article is talking about. Are we going to see a digital pound? I'm not sure. Probably, probably yes because uh, they've been looking at it for a long time um done let's guys... real quick i just thought i'd point out that uh notice what they're doing with the language there if you remove the word pound so it went from pound sterling to pound to britcoin right yeah. and so the idea is you're constantly separating it from the value that originally backed it linguistically i think that's kind of interesting too yep yep so that it eventually the lingo becomes that it's not 
backed by anything really it's just yeah yeah i agree that's that's a good that's a good point actually and they are not even thinking those properly like in in the case in the event of a solar flare, massive solar flare, or like a geopolitical event, and there is an EMP blast, most of the digital infrastructure will go down. They are even not even thinking seriously about their control. But like they want privacy and control at the same time. They're actually not thinking the, those things straight. Like they're they're just showing that they are greedy and they want control so much that they cannot even consider the events like there is a if there is a mistake or there is a mishap they're not thinking those concepts straightly nope i agree and um so we'll see are they going to protect cash <laughs> that's we're gonna have to see that but um they also said well, let's see the boe and the hm treasury said they expected to launch the digital pound referred to as Bitcoin by certain members of the public no earlier than 2025 should they move forward with the cbdc plan so um it's, it would be coming soon if it would yeah let, let me show you guys the supermarket in argentina where you can buy groceries for xmr so awesome. it's yeah it's pretty cool let me show you okay so for the people watching on youtube uh, there's a picture of the supermarket then let's go to the video <laughs> Except the Monero, and you can purchase anything that you'd like using Monero in Monero Town. So fantastic! That's awesome. Now I thought we'll, about uh, we'll try to have these guys jump on maybe uh, um, next week. I met I, I met this kid when I was in. Formosa. Yeah, the project Argentina as well as the uh, American continent. That's very important. And yeah, we yes. have to get there because the problem with Argentina is that their gun rights are very like tightly controlled. It's not like they have any second amendment or they even have uh, any concept of constitution natural rights. So yeah, we have to like focus on those parts. If we can yes. get secure like uh, United States or like Canada or like even Mexico or like Argentina. Um, actually, will, Can like, Canada is now out of the running. I'm just saying Canada doesn't actually have gun rights anymore. Yep, that's true. But yeah, we if we have like the culture, the culture, if we like amplify the culture of gun rights and Monero, privacy coin or even gold ownership, like it will actually shift the overton window so much in our favor one of the best things you can possibly do is take um and sell an item for monero for a long time so i'm gonna create a store like for example i would create like a an online convenience store and sell doritos and my doritos would always cost like 0 0.07 monero or not 0, 0, like 0 0.007 Monero. And that would, that price would stay that way for like a year. And then I would change it or a month. And then I would change it, but prices can't be shifting all the time. Take a price that's lower than lower than the spot price, say the 200 day average or something like that. And use that price for like three months, because then you're going to stabilize the price of Monero. Cause there's always something you can buy for that price. You know, short way, yeah, one of the things that Argentina, fixes that problem yeah. on its own, though, is uh, it, it, like if the larger the basket of currencies or the larger the basket of commodities that the uh, the currency that's appraising them is being measured against, the more stable it becomes. And I don't know if you've noticed, but Monero is primarily valued against the dollar right now but it's used as a supplement for the dollar on the dark market so you'll notice how its price in dollar terms is becoming ever more fixed because that because it does such high money velocity in dollar denominated terms yeah right seen that. yeah so and and that was one of the reasons why earlier the the hash power argument the first time um that uh 
the first time that he had mentioned how interesting it would be to use like AWS servers to just mine a whole crap ton of Monero blocks and mine a whole like and stop the mining of Bitcoin or something like that to see how that affects the price is the one variable that our price pegging and commodity pegging question because crypto it's the only place where this question even exists it's such a new element in the science of well well alas, going on. Alas, going Go on. the the thing is that the price of monero should ideally depend on the pro of the cost uh, firstly of the cost of um, mining a block plus the demand and i guess body can you explain to you further but uh that if if everyone is like me uh putting on the machines are you hearing me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's he's saying if, it way if, better than i was trying to but uh, keep if, going, if everyone if everyone just uh, has the machines running and has a, a poster of klaus going down on christine yeah, and throwing darts at it and uh, oh, dear, throwing Jesus. away like 50 euros per month and just mining the crap out of it, not caring about the cost. If everyone does that, then the price is uh, primarily defined by the demand and the speculation, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Klaus going down on Christine is not an image I needed in my head. Thank you very much. This man is a, a genius. I love it. Yeah, and uh, we have to lo it, look out that those Argentina conferences we will have, or even those groups like group meetups, we have to amplify the message of privacy coins, of the history of money, of the use of gold, and the lack of like gun rights. We have to, and we have to display like, like we have to advertise. You already made, you already made advertisement. that. ITP, you already made that point. Yeah, yeah, you hammered yeah. that one pretty good there, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> another thing is we have to make sure like the advertisement is done like in the for the local media groups as well as the political groups. Like we have to invite them and show them like the current one. Actually, we have to show them that the flaws, like if they want to stay in power because the other side will one day win election or they will try to do like coup or assassination or like whatever so you have to make sure the culture is there of having like end-to-end -end encrypted apps using dark nets using monero or even like encouragement of using like gun ownership we have to just make sure those kind of talking is happening there so don't stop by until that. the morale improves so the the way you do that is you've got to change the way people think about things because Next story. end up thoughts end up leading to action so you've just got to keep pushing different thoughts for people to uh think differently yep, and then yep, the culture correct. will end up changing yep, yeah, you have to constantly engage with the culture war and the of shifting of the overturn window then only let's let's just keep moving guys let's keep moving okay so we have the last thing Roy Dali on Bitcoin and the competition of money. It's two, two minutes and then that'll be it. Well, the evolution of Bitcoin over the years is one of the things that has um, in, influenced changes in my view. Um, it has proven itself um, something like 10, 11 years ago. Imagine the programming of this and here's the, you throw it out and that's the idea. It has not been hacked. It has um, um, operated, it, it has built, it has come an amazing way um, over that 11 years to be um, maybe uh, probably the most excited topic among a lot of people um, and has been used and, and is now um, has obtained, you know, the status of having imputed value. At the same time, it is one of those assets that is an alternative money. I think we're entering an era where um, there's going to be a competition of monies um, because of the printing of fiat money um, and the de depreciated value. There will be a competition of monies. Um, and Bitcoin is part of that competition. But the money has two purposes, a medium of exchange and a storehold of wealth. 
Um, and we are looking for, um, and it's portable. And you can, and it's best if it's recognized in other countries. Um, so gold is one of those. So I look at it as an alternative gold, but I look at a number of things as an alternative gold. Um, and I think that, and I think, and gold is still my favorite because of certain qualities. For example, um, you can't trace it. In, in Bitcoin, you can trace who owns it, where it's going, and, and so on. Governments can have that ability to trace it and so on. A gold piece of coin, it's, it's not connected. I think not connected has benefits, particularly in a world where maybe connections could be more risky. 